All right, so ladies and gentlemen, the first thing that I wanted to go over with you is how to show you um, how to go ahead and graph y, y plus 1 squared minus 3. All right, now based on, again, our transformation, our vertical, uh, based on our um, vertex form of our equation, we can identify that the axis symmetry is going to be h. So we need to identify what h is. Now, remember it says x minus h. All right, And one thing I want to rewrite to this to show you guys, because this becomes very confusing. Can you put my tape back? Is this can be rewritten as x minus negative 1, right? Don't you guys agree that x plus, x plus can be rewritten as minus a negative, right? So I want you guys to understand that when you're looking at this, think about this. This is x opposite of h. So whatever your h is in your equation, Think about taking the opposite sign here. Because really, it's x opposite h. Well, what is h? h is negative 1. Does everybody see that? Because everybody wants to say that, oh, h is 1 in this case. No, h in this case is negative 1. So my axis is x equals negative 1. Now, unlike standard form, where now we had to plug in that value, now all I can simply do to find my vertex is identify what k is. And k is just going to be the value outside your function. So I could say my vertex is now at negative 1, negative 3. And that's it. OK? So so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write, draw my vert axis symmetry, which is at negative 1. OK? Then I'm going to find my vertex, which is at negative 1, negative 3. You guys see how easy that was to find that? There's very, very little math, right? That really had to be done. Um, now what we need to do is go ahead and graph this. Now there's a one important thing that I didn't mention to you guys that I want to make sure I go over. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, we look at all these rules that we have for A, right? Is there anything that do we have an A other than 1 in this case? No. So we don't have any horizontal compression. We don't have any horizontal um, uh, stretching at all. So also, look at is A going to be positive or negative? What is A? What is? It's a positive 1. All right. So since it's a positive 1, I know my graph opens up. All right. Now the last thing I want to show you guys is when you guys had your homework last, last class period, one of the first functions we dealt with was x squared. And what was important about x squared was that had a a as 1. And I want you guys to understand the relationships of this parent graph. Because when you look at the relationships of this parent graph, the vertex was at 0, 0. The first point was at 1, 1. And the next point was at 2, 4. And the graph looks something like this. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a tip. This is the parent graph y equals x squared. It was in your homework for standard form, which you guys um, were supposed to do. So what I want you guys to understand about this is when you have a, remember in the last one, to find the other points, we had to use a table, right? Yes? You had to plug in the table. You had to plug in points to find the table. What's nice about this is as long as you know that it is in standard form, that your a is equal to 1, all I simply need to do is follow the same pattern. Go over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. So I'm just going to go over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'll do that on the other side. And now I have my graph. What? Where did I lose you? Because look at here is the parent graph. Here with no transformations. All right? The next point goes over one, up one, over two, up four. Okay? The only transformations, look at what did I what is the only thing I did with this graph? I shifted it to the left and I shifted it down three. Right? 
I didn't do any, I'm not making any other changes to the graph. The only thing I'm changing, if you guys could put your desks in rows, please. The only thing I'm changing is I'm shifting